line in New York City has a half fare transit card, which means you get on buses and subways for half price. And the other day when he showed his card to the token attendant, she asked him what his disability was, and he said, I have AIDS. And the attendant said, no you don't. If you had AIDS, you'd be at home dying. And so today I wanted to speak out as a person who has AIDS and is not dying. You know, for the last three years since I was diagnosed, my family thinks two things about my situation. One, they think I'm going to die. And two, they think that my government is doing absolutely everything in their power to stop that. And they're wrong on both counts. So if I'm dying from anything, I'm dying from homophobia. If I'm dying from anything, I'm dying from racism. If I'm dying from anything, I'm dying from indifference and red tape because these are the things that are preventing an end to the crisis. If I'm dying from anything, I'm dying from Jesse Helms. If I'm dying from anything, I'm dying because of the President of the United States. And especially if I'm dying from anything, I'm dying from the sensationalism in newspapers and magazines and television shows which are interested in me as a human interest story. Only as long as I'm willing to be a helpless victim, but not fighting for my life. If I'm dying from anything, I'm dying because not enough rich, white, heterosexual men have gotten AIDS for anyone to give a shit. You know, living with AIDS in this country is like living in the twilight zone. Living with AIDS is like living through a war, which is only happening to the people who happen to be in the trenches. Every time a shell explodes, you look around and you notice you've lost more of your friends. But nobody else notices. It isn't happening to them. They're walking through the streets as though we weren't living through some sort of nightmare. And only you can hear the screams of the people who are dying and their cries for help. No one else seems to be noticing. And it's worse than a war, because in a war, people are united in a shared experience. This war has not united us. It's divided us. It's separated those of us with AIDS and those of us who fight for people with AIDS from the rest of the population. Two and a half years ago, I picked up Life magazine, and I read an editorial which said, It's time to pay attention, because now this disease is beginning to strike the rest of us. It was as if I wasn't the one holding the magazine in my hand. And since then, nothing has happened to change the perception that AIDS is not happening to the real people in this country. It's not happening to us in the United States. It's happening to them, to the disposable population of bags and junkies who deserve what they get. The media tells them that they don't have to care because the people who really matter, they're not in danger. Twice, three times, four times, the New York Times has published editorials saying, don't panic yet over AIDS. It still hasn't entered the general population, so until it does, we don't have to give a shit. And the days and the months and the years pass by, and they don't spend days and months and years trying to get a hold of the latest experimental drug. And which dose to take it at, and with a combination with other drugs, and from what source. And how are you going to pay for it? And where are you going to get it? Because it isn't happening to them, so they don't have to give a shit. And they don't spend their waking hours going from hospital room to hospital room, and watching the people that they love die slowly of neglect and bigotry because it isn't happening to them, and they don't have to give a shit. They haven't been to two funerals a week for the past three or four or five years, so they don't give a shit because it's not happening to them. And we read on the front page of the New York Times last Saturday, because Anthony Fauci now says that all sorts of promising drugs haven't been tested in the past two years, because he can't afford to hire the people to test them. We're supposed to be grateful that this story has appeared in the newspaper after two years. Nobody wonders why somebody didn't dig that story up and print it 18 months ago instead of waiting before Fauci got dragged before a congressional hearing. How many people are dead in the last two years that might be alive today if those drugs have been tested more quickly? Reporters all over the country are busy printing government press releases. They don't give a shit. It isn't happening to them. Meaning that it isn't happening to people like them. The real people. The world-famous general public we all keep hearing about. Legionnaire's disease was happening because it hit people who looked like them, who sounded like them, who were the same color as them. And that fucking story about a couple of dozen people hit the front page of every newspaper and every magazine in this country. And it stayed there until this mystery got solved. All the newspapers that I read still tell me that IV drug users and homosexuals still account for the overwhelming majority of cases and the majority of people at risk. And can somebody please tell me why every single penny that gets allocated for education and prevention gets spent on ad campaigns that are directed almost exclusively to white heterosexual teenagers who they keep telling us are not at risk? Can somebody tell me why the only television movie ever produced by a major network in this country about the impact of this disease is not about the impact of this disease on the man who has AIDS but on his white, straight, nuclear family? Why, for eight years, every newspaper and magazine within this country has done cover stories on AIDS only when the threat of heterosexual transmission is raised? 
why for eight years every single educational film designed for use in high schools has eliminated any gay positive material before being approved by the Board of Education? Why for eight years every single public information pamphlet and videotape distributed by established sources has ignored heterosexual content? Why is every bus and subway ad I read and every advertisement and every billboard I see in this country specifically not directed at gay men? Don't believe the lie that the gay community has done its job and done it well at educating its people. The gay community and IV drug users are not all politicized people living in New York or San Francisco. Members of minority populations, including so-called sophisticated gay men, are abysmally ignorant about AIDS. If it is true that gay men and IV drug users are the populations at risk for this disease, then we have a right to demand that education and prevention be targeted specifically to those people. And it is not happening. We are being allowed to die while low-risk populations are being panicked. Not educated, panicked, into believing that we deserve to die. Why are we here today? We are here because it is happening to us and we do give a shit. And if there were more of us, AIDS wouldn't be what it is at this moment in history. It's more than just a disease which ignorant people have turned into an excuse to exercise the bigotry that they have always felt. It's more than a horror story exploited by the tabloids. AIDS is really a test of us as a people. When future generations ask us what we did to end this crisis, we will have to tell them that we were out here today. And we will have to leave the legacy to the generations of people who come after us. Someday the AIDS crisis will be over. Remember that. And when that day comes, when that day has come and gone, there will be people alive on this earth. Gay people and straight people, men and women, black and white, who will hear the story that once there was this terrible disease all over this country and all over the world, and that a brave group of people stood up and fought, and in some cases died, so that others may live and be free. So I'm proud to be with my friends and people I love today, because I think you're all heroes, and I'm proud to be part of this fight. But to borrow a phrase from Michael Cowan's song, all we have is love right now, what we don't have is time. In a lot of ways, AIDS activists are like those doctors out there. They're so busy putting out fires and taking care of people on respirators that they don't have time to take care of all the sick people. We're so busy putting out fires right now that we don't have time to talk to each other and strategize and plan for the next wave and the next day and the next month and the next week and the next year. And we're going to have to find the time to do that in the next few months. And we have to commit ourselves to doing that. And then, after we kick the shit out of this disease, we'll have time to kick the shit out of this system so that this never happens again.